Hello again, it's uh, Bagheera from Timber Pack, the cub pack within First Corsham Lord Methuen Zone. And in the last video, we showed you how to make a simple Cobra survival uh, bracelet. In this video, we're going to take it one stage further. We're going to be using exactly the same technique, but turn it into a King Cobra. And we've got some rather special survival buckles that we use on this one that will be even more ideal within a survival situation. And the joy of this one, because it's bigger, because it's thicker, it's actually got more paracord in it. So from one bracelet, you've got even more useful uh, paracord that you can end up using. Don't forget, please co like, comment and subscribe on all of our videos. Our channel is monetized, so the more likes and views we get, the more money ends up coming back into our cup pack. Hope you enjoy the video. Right, so this one's slightly more exciting because we are going to be using a different kind of buckle. Um, I'll put a link in the description to where I bought these on Amazon, but seeing as we're making survival paracord bracelets, why not actually use a survival buckle? In this one, you've got three parts, so it is just like a standard buckle, but if you take the steel out, you do have, see if I can get this first time, a there we go, a flint in the center. Cubs, you cannot use this in your bedrooms. I cannot stress this strongly enough. I do not need to get into trouble with parents. Equally, you've got a compass in there, so it's pointing north in that direction, which is right, but you'll notice if I put the steel back in, yeah, it's gonna throw off the compass. So you've got to undo the buckle to actually have the compass working for you. And then this part over there, is a whistle. So we're gonna use this to end up making a king cobra. This is somewhat broader, because if you can see, this buckle is a lot bigger than the ones we used on the standard cobra. So what I've got is I've got two lengths of paracord. Um, I'll give you the dimensions that I use uh, for this one, uh, um, I'll superimpose it onto the image because I'm going to calculate this through and show how much paracord it takes to go around an adult wrist, but you're going to have to play with that yourself. Sorry for the minor break there, my camera suddenly decided it wanted to stop recording, but um, I've ended up having to go back in and undo everything I did so I can show you this next stage. Okay, so I've got my two ends that have been flattened as um, as by uh, as we did in the, the first video. And what I've decided to do is I'm gonna make my center core green. And if I just untie this a second, because I've managed to wrap this around my tripod. So I've got my yellow here. That is going to be on the outside, but we're gonna do a single cobra down the center. Only a couple of tiny differences on this. Um, obviously, when you've got two colors running through, it's easy to see which is your crossing thread. Um, but equally, because the buckle is that much bigger, it can tend to wobble around on it if you just do a standard cowslip. So I'm gonna do a slight variation on the cowslip. So I'm gonna take both of my ends and feed them through, same as we did last time. And then keeping hold of the ends like that so I end up coming towards my center. Keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. There we go, I've got that loop again at the end. But this time, because I don't want it to wobble around so much, what I'm going to do is take each of my ends, there's a lot of thread here to play with as you can see, and I'm gonna come back up through again before I make the cowslip. So if I take my end and come back up through this side, and pull it up, little bit of a loop in there, push it right across, take my other end, push that up and come all the way through. Oh, make sure I tidy that up there. A little bit hasty there, baggy. So I've still got my loop in the center. So I've gone round twice and now these two parts can go straight through my loop 
So let's do a modified version of a cowslip. So what I should be able to do is just gently play this around and this, if I speed the video up, will end up looking much like the cowslip you had before. No, no need to type, speed up the video for that. There we go. It's just going to stop it wobbling around on the end of this larger buckle. Exactly the same routine with the other side. What we need to do is take our ends, making sure they don't get twisted. And this, so this is going to be on this one, is going to go down this side, feed through. Brilliant. And then the other side down there. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to double up on that because the reason I'm going to double up on it again is so it doesn't slide around. So keep it on that side and feed back through. This is also going to be a good way for me to measure up because if you watch the other video, yeah, I did potentially have it too tight. So this one, because it's a much bigger buckle and the fact that we're going to put another Cobra over the top of it, you need to make sure that you have plenty of slack on it so you can actually make this far thicker rather than broader. It's going to be a little bit broader, but it's certainly going to be a lot thicker kind of Cobra. So how are we looking? Okay. So let's size this up on my wrist and see what I can actually get. This may, well, this most certainly is going to take me a little bit of video editing. So let me come back to you in one second once I've actually got it sized up on my wrist. Okay, so I've sized it up a bit now um, and you can see I've got plenty of space against it. Um, but that will be taken up once we've done the weave around the center core and once we put the second Cobra onto it. So, I can unclip it now, and because we've worked through the top, we're going to be working this way around. Really easy to identify which is the top and bottom of this buckle. Now, when we ended up doing it with the twin colours, it was very easy to calculate which was my crossing colour, uh, crossing end, which was my, what I'm going to call, the looping end. So, let me show. Let's work from the right hand side, and you'll see when a loop develops, and the loop will then enable us to find out which chord we're crossing. So, go across the two, over the top, back round the two, through the loop we made, loosely tighten, and then proper tighten. Can't really see anything, but there's a beginning of a loop here. So, I know it was the right-hand side that went over first time, it's the left-hand side that goes over this time. So, over, over the top, behind the two, and gently tighten and this time we can actually see the loop coming down what would have been the outside color of the other on the other uh, bracelet that we made so wherever you see the loop the thread coming through it is our crossing end so i cross over the top behind the two and back up through the loop i started with pull and tighten and my loop is now on the other side so that's my overside, leaving a loop over the top, round the back, and come through. Loose tighten, big tighten. Don't forget, the more you tighten, the more cord you get into it, which is going to be useful in a survival situation, but the neater your weave is going to look. My loop is on that side now, so over the top, round the back, and up through the loop we've got. You may say to yourself, it's easy, go left and right, then left and right. But what if you end up wanting to take a break for a couple of seconds, got to answer a phone call or the washing up needs doing? You need to know where to pick up from. So if I've left that for a couple of minutes, I pick it up and go, right, there's my loop. So that's my crossing side. Cross over the top, round the back and through. Look for my loop. There's my loop. Across, round the back over the top, round the back, and up through the loop we started with. And giving it good tightens all the way. Well, you know how to do this weave, you've done it in the other video. So I'll bring this all the way down to the end to show you how you close off this one, and then we'll put the other color on the top of it. So we're very nearly at the end there. 
there's my loop. Go across, round the back of the two. Ah, pull in. You can see I can probably get another one, maybe two in there. Let's see. Across, over, round the back of the two, up through the loop I've made. Pull. I'm going to squeeze another one in here. So, where's my loop? That side, over, over the top round the back of the two, through and tighten. That looks pretty good to me. So again, a really good tighten on that last one. He's now looking at it again. There you go. This is why that last one is so important. I think I can get another one in there. So I'm going to over, underneath, because I know knew where my loop was, pull, tighten. Really good tighten on the end. I'm really pleased with that. Really pleased. So let's go for a super tighten on the end. And exactly the same. This is where parents, adults, responsible adult or semi-responsible baggy comes into play. Again, top tip, do not cut right in close because you're not going to be able to get a very good melt out of it. So I found about half a centimetre works. And as I said, did have another lighter. And we're going to use the lighter to help it melt back in. So melt it into a nice little blob. And then using the side of the lighter to press it in. Getting rid of any sharp edges. We can trim those later if necessary. So that one's melted in. And now we've got the other side. Again, about half a centimetre. Melt up, try not to melt the plastic of the buckle because that can be really irritating after this amount of work you've put into it. And then using the side of my lighter, pressing in, getting rid of any sharp edges, and there we go. So what we've got is that is a perfectly good survival paracord bracelet. Anybody be pleased with that one. But our next job is we're gonna end up using this stuff to end up making a king cobra. So that's putting the cobra over the top of this cobra with this length. I've just looked at my ends. So off camera, what I'm gonna do is just uh, get those ready for weaving. We don't need to make these perfectly flat because we're not gonna thread them through anything, but I'm just gonna get these melted so they don't fray on me. And then I'll take you into how we turn the cobra into a king cobra. So the ends of my yellow are all nice and tidied up now. And what I've done is just by marrying up the ends, says marry up my ends and feed through oh hello that went wrong so marry up my ends and feed through I'm going to find the center of my other color which is going to help us make a cobra over the top this is really quite simple to do um, all you're going to do is put that center behind the back of your original cobra. And simple as it sounds, we're now going to tie yet another cobra twist, a cobra weave over the top of this one. So I'm going to start on the right hand side, I'm going to make myself a loop, go over the top, over, round the back of my full cobra that I did underneath, and pull through. And then tighten up to the first position. And I'm going to make it quite nice and neat up to the top because what we're going to try and do is get this cobra to marry the weave down. This time we can instantly see where our loop is. So the loop goes across, over that one, round the back of my cobra, pull through and tighten. And then with a bit of work, there we go, we can now see we're starting to make a cobra weave on the other side. There's my loop over, over the top, and then through that loop that we made in the first place. And this is the time that I can now start looking at it to go, is that the weave I want? Is it the kind of spacing I'm gonna enjoy? And I'm really quite pleased with that. So there's my loop over the top, cross over, round the back of my original Cobra, and line it up and tighten. So there we are, timber pack colours is now starting to have come through with our green and gold. 
I look for my loop, loop is there, cross over, over the top, round the back of my original Cobra, and back through. Put it into the right kind of place, and tighten. I think for this one, I'm gonna speed up the camera for it. But I'll talk you through two more, uh, two more turns on it, um, so you can see exactly how we're doing it, but you can see we're starting to get a really pleasing pattern up here. So there's my loop, over the top, leaving a loop, cross over, round the back of the Cobra we originally made, back up through the loop we've just made, size up, get it into the right kind of position, and again, exactly the same as with the original Cobra, the tighter you make it, the better your weave is gonna look. And then, where's my loop? That side, over the top, round the back of my original Cobra, put it into the right kind of place, and tighten. Okay, should we speed this one up? And why not use this as the perfect example where I can just quickly have a cup of coffee and I'll know where to come back to because I've got to look for my loop and then I'll come back with the video when we're down the bottom and we'll close off in exactly the same way as we've done with the other ones. So here we are, very near the end of the outer colour and as you can see, it's starting to develop that nice little natural curve from it showing that I'm actually doing it tight enough. So again, looking for my loop, going across and we'll get as many more on as we think is appropriate. Nice and tight. There's my loop across, round the back of the original, back up through the loop we made, tighten. I don't know. Don't know. I'm gonna try one more and see what it looks like. So, cross over, back through, and tighten up. really give this one a good hard pull. Do you know what? I think I was right to put that extra one on. I've been lucky on these. So, exactly the same routine for finishing off. Not for cubs. Not for cubs. This is for a responsible adult. So, get our scissors. Snip about half a centimetre away. See if my original lighter is going to work. Again, not getting the buckle. Heat it up so it becomes a nice blob. And then using the lighter, squeeze it in to what we've been doing. There we go. And then the same with the other side. So, snip about half a centimeter. Get rid of that. And heat. That's nice and molten. Blow it out and then using the side of my lighter, press it in. And what you'll find with it when you're pressing in is you want to make sure that there are no sharp edges. And there we go. That is, and let's just get rid of that untidy bit there, is an amazing paracord bracelet with approximately twice as much paracord in it. But you can see how much thicker that is. If I go back to the one we made in the first video, yes, it's broader, but yes, it's thicker. And that's why it's so important to make this one that little bit longer so that, here's the moment of truth for Baggy. Can he get it on? It's always awkward when you're trying to do this for a camera. Oh, I will make it work somehow. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, and look at that. Absolutely perfect in the colors of our pack. Now don't forget, for both of these, you can reverse the colors. In this one, yep, you just start over with the yellow in the middle if you're using those particular colors. If I reach behind myself one second and find a box, just so you see, that's what it would be if you ended up going with a yellow down the core and a green on the outside. I decided that I wanted this one to show the cubs so it stands out massively. So there you go. A single Cobra survival bracelet 
And there we have a king cobra using the survival bracket steel and compass. Hope you've really enjoyed these um, couple of videos. Please like, comment and subscribe. We are a charity. Timber Pack always like um, getting comments from you all, but equally this channel is monetized. So the more likes, comments, subscribes, more views we get, the more money ends up coming back into the cup pack. And we'll be able to present you with more videos like this. And I hope you really like them. Thanks very much.